Welcome to the Low Carb USA podcast, where we seek to inspire you to help us build this community. I'm Doug Reynolds. And this is Pam Devine. So today I have with us uh, Dr. Brian Lenskers, and I feel like he's like our very first success story, at least as far as practitioners and physicians go. You know, we had a ton of people that were doing this for themselves that had great success stories. But uh, I think this was the first physician that we became aware of. So Brian, welcome. And uh, tell us a story. Tell us how that all went. Well, Doug and Pam, thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor. I love anything you do. I love to be a part of that. Um, you know, I started out just like a lot of us, you know, overweight as a kid, kind of struggled with weight, was athletic in high school, wrestled, played football. My weight would go up and down. And then after high school, I started gaining weight slowly, college and med school and then residency. All you see is what we think is healthy whole wheat, uh, you know, bagels and, and we're having rice every day and all this stuff. So I just started gaining weight about 12 years into practice. I started realizing, you know what, I'm working out six days a week and I'm gaining more weight. I'm eating healthy. I'm doing what all the guidelines show. I was having green shakes in the morning having a, an apple with some almonds at, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Then I'd be starving for lunch. A lot of the times as a doc, I'm busy working through lunch. So I would just shove something down without, without even thinking about it, then grab another snack in the afternoon. Then at the end of the day, when you're, you're hungry, starving again, because you're, you're carb loading all day, um, I'd be eating something else, then going home and snacking before dinner, then eating. So it, it seemed like all day you'd be eating whenever you had a break. So a lot of docs get into these very unhealthy lifestyles. So what happened with me is I started observing my patients. And I noticed that some of the patients who were very thin and healthy weren't eating five times a day. They were eating twice a day or maybe even once a day. And they were doing fine for all these years. And everyone else, we say, if you skip breakfast, you're going to be in starvation mode. If you don't eat every two hours, you're going to shut the, the factory down. You're not going to have any metabolism. And when you realize there's no data for that, you start thinking, are we giving bad advice? So for 12 years, I was giving bad advice because I was following the standard of care. Um, and then what happened is I observed my patients and one patient came in and he lost 40 pounds since our last visit. And I got nervous. First thing I think of is cancer or, or diabetes because he was always very overweight. And he said, well, doc, I'm doing this crazy thing, this intermittent fasting. He would basically fast two days a week, eat 600 calories those days, very low carb. And so to me, it didn't make sense. I said, well, if you're fasting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, then Wednesday, you must be eating twice as many calories when, you know, to make up for that that you missed. And he says, no, it's weird. I'm not even hungry on those other days. I actually eat less than I was before. I said, well, that doesn't make sense from this whole calories in, calories out stuff. So I started researching um, intermittent fasting. And I come across, of course, Jason Fung. He said, look, this works. And this is what I'm doing with my patients. And so I started looking at that and starting to understand insulin resistance, you know, how diabetes works and how our body's physiology uh, is adapted to our eating styles now and, and our lifestyles. And, and it's not just what we're eating, it's stress, it's getting enough sleep um, uh, and exercise and, and diet. So that's where I started really getting intrigued by this. So I started changing my diet up, cutting carbs, cutting out processed foods, getting rid of what they call healthy whole wheat, uh, the, the, the oatmeal for breakfast and all that kind of stuff and eating real food. And as I noticed, I started losing weight. On, it was down about 30 pounds in the first few months. And I thought, man, this is really interesting. And then the, thing, the dilemma I ran into is patients would ask me, what are you doing, doc? You know, before they'd say, give me a magic pill to help me lose weight. And I would tell them it's more lifestyle. I said, this is what I'm doing, but I can't really recommend it because that's not what the guidelines show. And they said, well, whatever you're doing, doc, it's got to be good, so I'll do it. So I started having patients having some success. And, you know, you're still – anxious because you don't want to be outside the standard of care, even if the standard care of care is wrong. So I started having some success. And then I heard about a conference, Low Carb USA in San Diego, which I could throw a rock from my office and, and hit the building. So I showed up there and obviously Doug did a great job of organizing everything. Unbelievable speakers. And I just sat in my chair and thought, wow, these guys are experiencing exactly what I'm seeing personally and with my patients. So when you have psychiatrists talking about mental health improving with dietary changes, you have cardiologists there talking about cardiovascular improvements. You have engineers talking about root cause like Ivor Cummins and start understanding, wow, insulin is a big, big problem and insulin resistance is a, a, a big problem. So when you start looking and, and stepping back, all these things that have been 
elusive in understanding uh, become more clear. When I see people with high insulin levels, you know, a lot of times they're going to complain of fatigue, gaining weight, just miserable all the time, their joints hurt, everything uh, kind of snowballs on them. And what we do is say, well, we'll give you a pill for the inflammation. We'll give you a pill for the blood pressure. We'll give you one for your mood. We'll give you one to sleep. And what we do is throw drugs at people rather than saying, okay, why are they having all these things? Why are, why are we having these problems? And so the more I delved into this and saw the experts and, and what people are doing out there, I realized I wasn't the only one having success and I wasn't the only one who was using this to, to treat patients. And then I became emboldened because I came back and I realized what Ivor Cummins was talking about with Dr. Kraft's data, and a lot of people have heard about that, uh, worth looking at if you haven't. Um, the Diabetes Epidemic in You is his book, and he passed away after, at 99 years old. Um, but basically what he was saying is, look, I did autopsies on all these people. I've looked at their carotid arteries. I've looked at their hearts. And the problem has been high insulin levels, not necessarily high LDL. And in our standard care, all we talk about is LDL. We, I never really thought about triglycerides, HDL, and how diet can impact these other um, markers. So that's kind of what got me looking at it. And I went back and I said, well, you know, let me assess my patients. So I took my 10 patients who've had either major cardiac uh, disease, bypass surgery, multiple stents, and I checked their insulin level. I had never checked an insulin before that one time. And I realized all of them, even one lady that was 118 pounds, had high insulin levels. And I thought, wow, this is intriguing. I've never heard about insulin. And, and I think when you talk to most doctors, they're not going to talk about insulin resistance with very elevated um, insulin levels. Actually, we're more switching to hyperinsulinemia, meaning you need more and more insulin to get rid of that sugar. So the more we cut our sugar down, the more we cut down processed foods, the more we drop our insulin levels. And you know, by a lot of the studies we're seeing now, we're seeing that people do better from a cardiovascular standpoint. And that was my biggest concern going into low carb. When you tell people, okay, we're telling you 180 degrees different than what I told you a year ago. And here's why. Um, so for the first time in my career, I started seeing people coming off insulin. I've had to date 15 people come off insulin, one this week. And so it's exciting to see, and it's exciting to realize that we can de-prescribe medications, that we can take people off of medicines, off of uh, pain medicines, off of sleeping pills, off of CPAP machines, uh, hopefully preventing dialysis and all these complications of poorly controlled diabetes. And I think when people ask me why I'm passionate about it, it's because I've seen the disasters. I've seen people have limbs amputated. I've seen people die early because of their disease process. And as physicians, we have to do whatever we can to prevent disasters. I, I don't want a mechanic who's going to fix my engine after I blow it up. I want someone who's going to say, look, here's how we prevent your engine from blowing up. We got to change your oil. We have to change the spark plugs every now and again. We want your machine to run as efficiently as it, as it can. And so you don't want someone putting the wrong gas in your engine. And so that's what we have to look at in primary care because we see our medical system crumbling and we see the ravages of diabetes and amputations and all these, these terrible things that happen. And we can see that this is a preventable disease. We, we bought the, the sale of goods that diabetes is an irreversible progressive disease. Now we know that's not true. We're seeing it ourselves. We're seeing it firsthand. And I think once you see that, you can't step back and unsee it. So then what happened is after the conference, after seeing all these great speakers and, and doctors from around the world uh, talking, I came back and I thought, you know, I'm going to reach out to Doug Reynolds and Pam and say, guys, uh, what are you doing in the community here in San Diego? They happen to be in my town. So we got together and we talked and, and uh, had lunch like the next day type thing. And we really said, we, ha we have to do something in the community. So we started building a community here in San Diego of support uh, of people who can uh, be like-minded and have people that they can see are ahead of them in, in, in the process and behind them. And so it, it's great to build that community. And the other thing, we were very fortunate to have Brett Schur, a cardiologist, uh, he's a diet doctor now, their medical director um, in town, that we actually did residency together. And we realized we had the same views on, on lifestyle and, and diet and, and activity. And so he joined me for a conference and, and uh, Jeff Cotterman from tri System and Doug Reynolds and Pam, um, all joined us and we were able to do a six week conference and tell people, look, here's low carb. And back then no one knew about it. And so we got to explain to people the physiology of, of, of how to come off medicines, how to, how to not be dependent on insulin. And I kind of lost track and I thought that was kind of a neat thing we did. And then a year later, 
uh, a good friend of mine came up and said, Brian, do you realize our church lost over 2000 pounds combined that we can document that we know for sure. And that's not their neighbors and friends and all everyone else who was involved. That's just them. So you realize we're having an impact. We're, we're helping people. We're preventing disease. And that's what's got us passionate about it. And that's why I'm so supportive of what low carb USA is doing and, and so many other people out there. And, and um, so that's kind of transformed my, practice of medicine and my views on, on uh, treating patients. That's awesome. Um, well, you, you talk about us doing it, but I think that local community thing that you organized was all you. I literally just sat in the back of uh, the church there during those meetings, like a proud father. And I just like, look, <laughs> look at this guy. Um, and you've gone on since then. Um, you've, joined up with Tro Collegian and you guys have got a, a really cool podcast going. So tell, tell us all about that. Yeah, that's been a huge deal. You know, for us, you know, for me, I didn't really want to stand out. I was happy just sitting in my little practice and doing my thing, you know, and, and taking the, the ridicule from some of my partners who are now prescribing low carb diets a year and a half, two years later, right? Because they're seeing my patients coming off meds. They're seeing my patients doing better. They're seeing my patients and, and me, showing lab results that they think are there. They have to be on huge doses of medication to achieve those results. When in fact, they're coming off medicines at the same time that their numbers are getting better, which is unheard of in medicine. So in doing this, I thought, you know, I want to do a podcast. And I really want to give a voice to other doctors, other practitioners out there who are doing this kind of medicine, because there's a ton of them. You start realizing that there's a lot of people doing their little quiet thing and no one's really talking about it. So Tro Collegian caught my attention on Twitter and he's a New Yorker, loud mouth, uh, strong opinions. And, but he's a guy who went from 350 pounds down to a 32 inch waist. who's now an athlete and, and very fit and he's done it himself. So, and he clearly understands the, the problems of obesity. He clearly understands what it's like to, to have people make fun of you. He understands what it's like not to be able to fit in a, in a plain seat. And these are things that I didn't experience, even though being overweight, I was never morbidly obese to that where it really affects your life. So to have his perspective, I thought was very valuable. So I reached out to him and he said, yeah, let's do it. And we're reaching other doctors. And so it gives them a platform to say, look, I'm in Canada and I'm doing this. I'm in Australia and I'm doing this. I'm in South Africa and I'm doing this. And so to see that and to see the benefits and to hear patient stories, you know, their, their stories of being unable to, to function in life. You know, we have one lady that had seizures for 40 years, they were going to take out part of her temporal lobe to treat her seizures. And she thought, well, I'll try diet first and see what happens. She's been seizure free for three years. And she went from three over 300 pounds down to 140 pounds. And she's hiking and having a great life off of her medication. So it's really important. I think it's really important to hear people's stories because pictures can be changed and they can, you know, we can exaggerate a bit, but when you see lives change and when you hear testimonies of people, it's powerful. And that was part of what low carb USA, I saw people's testimonies on, on, you know, helping going through chemotherapy and doing better than other people when they're on a low carb ketogenic diet. So when you see all these things and you think, man, it's amazing that so many disease processes can benefit from dietary and lifestyle changes. And we don't talk about it. We, we, we talk about it in a passing say, well, I'll try diet. When that doesn't work here, take all these meds and shoot insulin or say, well, eat whatever you want. We'll just give you more insulin to get rid of the sugar. And doctors clearly don't understand the physiology. They clearly don't understand the implications of what we're doing by trying to take the easy way out. So I think lifestyle is a massive um, area of medicine that we've been missing. There's no room for arrogance. And that's the other thing. Being at the Low Carb USA conference, I could sit down with some of the world experts and they're happy to share with their knowledge. You know? So I think a lot of that we're seeing is, is very exciting to see the great minds who are working on this problem rather than just wringing their hands and say, let's just keep doing the same thing over and over. Let's do a low fat starvation diet that's never been shown to be helpful. Look around at our society and we realize it's not working. It's time for a change of the guards and it's coming. That's awesome, Brian. I got to thank you for, for what you're doing for, for this community since you guys have come on board. Um, I see Pam just just popped in here a minute ago, but uh, maybe there's something she wanted to ask you. So yeah, um, Brian, we're so glad to have you here. And it's been really a privilege and an honor to witness your growth over the years and your willingness, like you said, to make changes, adjust with your patients and watching what you've been doing with our local community, um, you know, taking all your free time and spending it educating and sharing and supporting others to live a better, healthier lifestyle with, with 
information that they may not have gotten somewhere else. Over half a million downloads, that's helping a lot of people and um, it's only continuing to grow around the world. So I actually wanted to thank you for what you've been doing. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's an honor. You know, I think doing what you're doing, getting it out there, getting people to understand, at least getting doctors to be curious to say, okay, should I at least look at what I'm doing? If my patients aren't getting better, I have to change something. It, it, we're smart enough as doctors to know if I keep giving them the same medicine, their blood pressure keeps going up. I don't keep giving them the same medicine. I have to make a change. And the medicine we're giving people from a lifestyle perspective has been terrible so far. And our, our results are showing and, and we're seeing this epidemic of obesity and diabetes. So, you know, it, it's incumbent upon us to start saying, how do, how do we look at this problem a different way? The engineers are very good at that. They, they say this, the, we're having structural problems. We got to change how we do this. We can't keep building buildings the same way. So us docs, we really have to stop saying, well, this is the way I've always done it. So I'm going to keep doing it that way. Um, and the benefit I had, you know, is struggling with weight myself. A lot of doctors don't have that problem. They haven't had the struggles that I've had. Every doctor we have on our podcast has had personal struggles with weight gain, obesity, pre-diabetes, those kind of things. So they had to make a change. And when they made a change, they made the change for their patients and realized that their patients are getting better. And, you know, I think we really have to save the healthcare system. I think doing what you're doing, getting the word out there, because I want to be doing what I'm doing if it weren't for you doing what you do and, and ha exposing me to that. And I think the more doctors who get exposed and they see the results our patients are having and they're seeing people come off insulin that they thought was impossible, um, you know, it's just, it's just going to grow from there. And I think I'm just following the footsteps of the greats like Gary Fetke and, you know, Tim Noakes. They put their whole reputation, their career at stake when no one was talking about this stuff, you know, and, and we don't have time to wait for, you know, a 20 year study to say this is the way to do it. What we have to do is re rely on our clinical experience and, and say what is best for that patient in front of me with close monitoring, doing it reasonably. And you coming up with the the um, guidelines, treatment guidelines for low carb and intermittent fasting is, is valuable because we have to have a standard of care. So looking at insulin levels, A1C, every day I have patients coming in who are benefiting. So it, it's, it's an honor for me and I, I, I can't see any other way of practicing medicine. Well, that's brilliant. Thanks so much for being on and giving us your time. Yeah, anytime. And thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. I love what you're doing. Love the podcast. I uh, love what Low Carb USA is doing, you know, and really bringing people together. And I think we're all, we've said that from day one. We'll volunteer our time. We'll work hard. We know where this is going. So it's worth it. It's, it's a labor of love for all of us. So love what you're doing. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to an episode of the Low Carb USA podcast. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash USA.